this video here, we're going to go over on how to create translations for our game or software, whatever you want to make translations for. So I've gone ahead and threw together just a simple little main menu. We've got a background. We've got um, just a, a transparent black rectangle just to darken that up a bit. And we got where, you know, whatever you would have for your title of your game. And then I've got a drop down menu here, an options button. And that just has a few items in it. As you see here, I've just added one for English and one for Spanish so we can change our language. Now, in most games, you would probably have this inside of your options menu somewhere. And if you're doing this as a software, you probably have it inside for settings or preferences pop up or something. So however you want to do that, just make sure you have that set up so that you can actually select an option. And I've just gone ahead and connected a signal in my case for an item selected for my options menu here. All right, and then I've got my three blank buttons here, one for new game, one for options, and one for I have my three buttons here, one for new game, one for options, one for quit. And if we were to boot that up right now, we would see they fill out. We have English. Perfect. But of course, if we were to switch, nothing happens because we don't have any translation set up yet. So uh, what I'm going to do here is we're going to use a program for creating a, sp a not spreadsheet, spreadsheet. And recommended is to use the online Google service or something like LibreOffice. Um, I heard that what I've heard is that Microsoft's 365, the directory spreadsheet software, doesn't save it correctly in the format or whatever that we need. So if you want to try that, you can. But I am using LibreOffice. And that'll be the calc option here. So to create this translation for 1A, we just leave that completely blank. 1B, we'll put EN for English. For C, I'm going to do ES for Spanish. If you wanted to do French, you could do FR for French. Um, yeah, there's a, a bunch of different languages that go in there that you can do. You can easily look up the list of locales. That way you can get the, the codes there. But if you've seen languages up in URLs or in drop down menus or whatever before, you probably know what this is or probably know what they are. So, and that's all you're going to do for the row of one. Starting from 1B forward, you're just going to put the code for each language. Now on 2A in the A column here, we're going to put a our code that is going to be translated into different languages. So I'm just going to do new game all one word and then for english i'll have it new space game and now for spanish let's say let's say you don't know spanish right so what we can do there is we can come into we can come up into google translate and go ahead and type in new game now obviously these are this isn't always the best because in some languages, context could matter or the way something is said, and it could just be completely different. So preferably, you want to pick a language that you know how to speak or at least read. Or have someone that knows that language to look over everything for you. But for this example, I'm just going to go with this. It's also been verified, so I know it should be fine. So I'm going to take new game. And I'm just going to put that inside of my Spanish category. And I'm going to do the same thing for options under 3A. And 4A will be quit. I'll put the English translation of options and quit. And then I'll go ahead and just get my Spanish options here for my translation. And quit. Now, we should probably put this as capitals as well for these, just so that it fits in a little better. There we go. 
Now, once you're done adding in as many translations and keys here that you want uh, to translate, column A, 1A, you can leave blank. It doesn't matter. Then 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, etc. All the way down will be all your keys for translating. So an example you could put here is menu items or dialogue. Our B column here, B1, is going to be your language. The language code, B2, 3, 4, 5, etc. All the way down, it's going to be your English translations. And then C1 will be your next language code. And then C2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down, it's going to be those translations for that language. And then same with D. If we add another one, D1, we would have another language code, like FR for French. And then D2 or 2D, 3D, 4D, all the way down is going to be our French translations and etc. all the way down until you've got all you need. So when you got that, go ahead and hit save. And I'm just going to go into my little program folder for, um, for the project I'm using here. I've created a translations folder and I'm going to save it inside of that. There we go. I'll just call mine translations. Now the type that we want to save it as is a CSV. Go ahead and hit save. If you're using LibreOffice, this will pop up. Confirm file format. We'll say use text CSV format. We're going to do for the character set, we're going to use UTF-8. That's what we got to use here. For our field delimiter, we use a comma and string is the quotations we can just leave that the way it is those should be like that by default you might have to change the character set and hit okay now i'm going to close this because it won't load go that won't import it properly unless we close it so if we open up gato we'll see that imported in and we have all of our language files. We have one for English, we have one for Spanish, and you'll have one for French, whatever else you ever put in there. But before that, what I want to do is go to the file we just saved here and open that back up. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because I had an issue when I was doing uh, one of my languages is that they weren't showing up proper or characters were being left out. And to fix that, I actually just turned on format quoted field as text and detect special numbers and with both of those on that fixed the text issue i was having so all you're going to do is if that's not set go ahead and hit ok and then just resave it again and then close it and let it uh, re-import the new changes but all right now that we have that we need to actually get our translations in game so to do that we just go up here to project and project settings we will go to the localization folder and you see just as I have in here you can pull those out we're just gonna hit the add button go into our translations folder and select them so I select English and I'll hit add and I'll select my Spanish and if you have more you can add those in as well and go ahead and hit close all right so we have our translations in however our option still isn't gonna do anything because we're not translating anything. So what we can do is we can either just come to our our button here and then for the title just type in our code, which our first one was new game, no spaces. Or we can set that in inside of script, which is the way I personally prefer doing it here. So in a script or in our script. Uh, where I connected my options button, where I can select my language. What I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the name of my option. What I mean by that is right here when we do our drop down, I want to see if I'm selecting English or if I'm selecting Spanish. So I'm just going to go ahead and check. So that'll we'll get our our button here that has our languages and we'll do get item text 
for the argument, we'll pass in the index. That way it knows whether we want item zero, item one, item two, item three, etc. And I'm actually gonna assign all of that to a variable called language. So now language, if we were to print it out, that's gonna tell us our what language we have selected here. So the perfect set for doing this is to and then come in and we can do check if language is equal to English. And we can do another check. We can do LF or we can just do an if. It shouldn't matter in this case because only one will ever be true. But if language equals Spanish. So we have our checks here. Oh, we need two equals there, not one. All right. So now we've got our language check for when we select it. And... We just need to make our language, our translations actually happen now. So if English is set, it's selected, and it'll be the same thing with Spanish. We're just going to change one item in there, but we're going to go translation server dot set underscore locale. And then the argument it takes is a string. And the string you pass in is the language code, which for English was EN. And for Spanish, we'll do the same thing. Translation server dot set locale, where our code will be ES. Awesome. That's great. So if we hop in, we can take a look. And our text here is changing automatically for us. That's perfect. Now, the reason that is translating already is because the item I set here is to our, um, is our code item. The same thing I had for my code. But you see, if I had a space in here, we don't have that code and new game won't actually change now. Now, I'll say if for some reason this isn't translating over and you've double checked the spelling and it's all in there. Then what we're gonna what you can do is just wrap this in a translate function like that, like so. And that should force it to translate into the appropriate language. But that's it, that's all we have to do there. For that to work. And just like that, we have all of, we have our languages set up. So if you ever add another language in the future. You'll just come in and you can just add another check if language equals uh let's go with let's go with French. We'll say we added that. And then we just do translation server dot set locale French. And then of course inside of our actual menu here, we would add in French and of course make sure you have that added into your actual spreadsheet as well with all your, all your other translations and just let it import in add your new language into your project and there we go that's it that's as simple as it is to add a new language into your game to translate everything